I started to help with children's camps in Israel and then I joined military for two years. This is the two years where God used to grow me the most. In the boot camp, in the evening, at night, remember, I was not able to use my phone, but secretly I used my phone and I texted mom, mom, I want to go home, I don't want to be here. I was, uh, I was almost crying and I was feeling so alone. There's nobody here. My commanders, they were screaming at us, <laughs> something, I guess, and all the soldiers. I was really scared, but since this moment, God's promises started to come to my mind. I will be with you. I will be with you. Mm. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ordinary People with Extraordinary Lives. I am your host, Arlenis, and we are back with episode 11 on Seeing Hope. Today's Bible verse, it's uh, from Romans 8. 18 and this is uh, my guest favorite verse angelina korotki <laughs> welcome angelina right. and thank you for joining us today thank you i will be reading the bible verse it's romans 8 18 for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us and this is angelina's favorite verse why is it your favorite bible verse <laughs> because when you hear my testimony, you will understand why. Yeah. I will lead it to this verse and then I will discover it. Oh, yes. so she's not going to mm -hmm. tell me right now. No, that's, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but just very grateful to have you here. And I've heard part of your testimony before. Well, I think mm -hmm. you share it with me. Um, and I know that it will be an encouragement to everyone out there, whoever listens to this podcast. Just to begin, I would love for you to just kind of introduce yourself mm -hmm. where you're coming from where were you born and there's a little bit about you know your upbringing with your family yeah. was mm -hmm. there a christian home just yeah so i was born in ukraine my family is a christian family we're missionaries and we're ministering in slavic gospel association mm -hmm. my dad has been faithfully serving there for many years i think more than 20 years and we also been mi missionaries in Kazakhstan because of this uh, ministry, Slavic Gospel Association. So my dad works with Russian people and develops in them pastors, mm -hmm. uh, helps them to become pastors so they can go to Russian speaking churches and develop their new churches. Where were you originally born then? I was born in Ukraine. In Ukraine. And when I was seven years old, we moved to Asia, Kazakhstan, as missionaries for eight years. And when I was 15 years old, we moved to Israel. And we're still in Israel, and I'm a student at the Master's University. So you're coming from a Christian background, yes. I believe mm -hmm. in family. And uh, something that a lot of people think is that salvation is inherited by some reason, but it's not. I want you to tell me a little bit about your experience as a child uh, growing up, you know, with believing parents, obviously you're you're not safe by because yeah. your parents are safe. Can you just tell me a little bit about that? How yes. was you know that experience for you um, being introduced to the gospel or yes. to God from such a young age? So I was born in a Christian family, and I was always watching my father being pastor in the church. My mother was teaching Sunday school. My siblings were involved in music ministry and my whole life I was in church and I was sure that when I die I go to heaven mm -hmm. only because I was born in Christian family that's it but when we moved to Kazakhstan I started to have uh, new friends because I was there in school from grade first to grade eight mm -hmm. and my mother was teaching Sunday school for Muslim children and some of my friends, Muslim friends, hated me because I'm a Christian. And one, once one boy started to choke me, and, but I was able to escape. Mm -hmm. And I was also inviting my Muslim friends to come to Sunday school. And they were coming, but probably only because we were giving candies and snacks <laughs> to them in the <laughs> end of every lesson. Uh -huh. And when I was younger i was very involved in helping my parents in the church mm -hmm. but then when i became teenager 
I wanted to be friends with my cool friends from school and I started to be less interested in church and ministry in ministry all I wanted is just to be outside with my friends and I started skipping Sunday services like I wouldn't go to service in the morning I would only go in the evening and I wasn't really paying pay attention to the service because I wanted to be with friends mm. and but I still was sure that I'm saved mm. when I like go to heaven only because my parents are Christians so I'm saved yeah. yeah and when I was 15 years old we moved to Israel and I found new friends we started to be outside most of the time and the same church was not the main thing for me but when I was 16 years old my dad took me to a Christian camp near Jerusalem in Yad Shemana, and before he left he told me Angelina if you hear the Lord is calling you go mm. and I thought to myself mm, okay but I'm saved I don't need it mm. and so and I just went to the camp and on the last day of the camp I understood that my parents cannot save me my church cannot save me only Jesus saves and I finally understood that I'm a sinner I need forgiveness and I'm so grateful that I was living in the life that I'm righteous mm. but I'm so grateful that God removed it and he showed me that I'm not and I'm going to hell mm. if I don't accept him a lot of people deal with that right that yes. they think like mm -hmm. oh yeah I was I'm a good yeah, girl I'm I don't righteous. do anything I yeah. don't do anything bad. I grew, I grew up in a Christian home, yeah. so therefore self-righteousness. How was the process for you to realize or that the Lord now is convicting you like, hey, so I'm I'm not a, a believer, really. Mm -hmm. I'm ju I've just been following whatever I've been taught since I was a child. How was that process for you? I don't even know because the camp uh, throughout the week, we were having a lot of lessons at the camp and I was listening to all, this, all the sermons and just on the last day I just he, the God he just called me and I just I don't know how to explain it was not something yeah in the process it was just it's like when yeah. the gospel finally yeah, just kind of finally clicked just in a moment like yes you mm -hmm. understood yeah that you were mm -hmm. a sinner in that because your yeah. parents your dad was a pastor or your mom mm -hmm. was teaching in Sunday no. school that that's not mm -hmm. what saved so that is yeah. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. when I was saved I began to be more involved in church and I started to help with children's camps in Israel and mm -hmm. then I joined military for two years and this is the two years where God used the time to grow me the most because it was sometimes I had very difficult situations and from the very first day like on the boot camp in the evening at night remember I was not able to use my phone but secretly I used my phone and I texted mom mom I want to go home I don't want to be here I was uh, I was almost crying and I was feeling so alone there's nobody here my commanders they were screaming at us <laughs> something <laughs> yes and all the soldiers I was really scared but since this moment God's promises started to come to my mind I will be with you I will mm. be with you mm. when you go through your fathers I will be with you and since then the whole time God was with me and he's still mm. with me why did you <laughs> join the military first of all <laughs> yeah so in Israel everyone has to join military after he finishes high school girls and boys Wow so I, I had two choices uh, to go to jail or military so I decided military is better yeah that sounds pretty good to me yeah. <laughs> I think I stick with the military so, too in Israel it's Jewish people and I had this amazing opportunity to tell them about Christ mm -hmm. to my commanders and soldiers and even though they don't like Christian people and they don't believe in Jesus I was trying to show to them obedience and through my obedience I was able to show Christ and they saw my obedience and my commanders will, were not too hard on me uh, because because I'm Christian and even mm -hmm. until today we still keep in touch. Can you think back of 
how your life was right growing mm-hmm. up um and then to the point of your conversion that you finally realize i need christ i'm a sinner and i'm gonna go to hell if i don't repent can you think back and just think about how your life changed from how you were before and then after after christ for that i never really read bible before that i wasn't i only read bible with my parents only because i had to Mm. because they were with me and i wasn't deep in relationship with god he was just just a great god somewhere but he's not very personal Mm. but after i became believer slowly and slowly he began to work in my life and now he's closer and closer every day now he is my abba Mm. he's very close i call him abba it's uh, in Hebrew, it's father, but I feel like it's more, more personal, Abba. So how long were you in the military then? How long I were you there for? I was in military for two years. And when I finished military, after that, um, I moved to California. And to how was that? How, what made you uh, yeah. decide to move? So to my dad goes to Shepherd's Conference every year, and he told me about John MacArthur, and then I heard the Master's Choral when it, he came, when Kral came to Israel. Mm-hmm. I heard them for the first time. They were singing in Jerusalem, and I thought, I want to be there. Mm-hmm. But I thought it's impossible because we don't have all the money that we need, and but there is nothing impossible for God. He mm-hmm. provided all I needed, and praise God, I'm starting my fifth year at the Master's University. Mm-hmm. Your father comes here for Shepherd's Conference, mm-hmm. and Kral comes. And what is choral? Because also for those who do not know what choral is. <laughs> choral is a choir at the yeah. Master's University. And we minister people, churches, by singing songs mm-hmm. of worship. Mm-hmm. And our director, Dr. Plume, mm-hmm. he shows that all the beauty of music when it's for God. Yeah. Yes. And I... I got the privilege to enjoy a Christmas concert by you guys and it was so beautiful I love like the whole stage store like uh, theatrical performance that you guys have and it's so beautiful Mm -hmm. just center around the gospel so uh, I hope you guys (laughs) do it again because it was really it was really uh, rich and just such a blessing to see you guys so um so then uh, so you said that you, this is your fifth year in Masters mm-hmm. University so that means you moved here what in year 2016 in 2016. August finally God provided all I needed and I started my studies and I was enjoying all my classes I joined the master's chorale and the this year of 2016 we were supposed to go to Israel and Italy on chorale tour I was just so excited I couldn't believe it's my life just so many blessings yes but god had better plans for me on the last day of my first semester i was involved in a car accident after which i had brain injury half my body was paralyzed i had to learn again how to walk dress myself talk better and i was in coma with many broken bones and eventually i had to leave masters for uh, like seven six months and I had to go back to Israel and go through rehabilitation. Mm. And I also I started having burning pain almost every day. And I just couldn't believe it was my life. I had everything that I was dreaming about. And now I'm just sitting in my room. I cannot walk. I'm in pain. And there is nobody there. And the feeling of, of loneliness was mm. not leaving me. I was... I was just going to rehabilitation center every day and I didn't know what to do. But then fi- I was I remember I was sitting in my room. I was praying, God, why did it happen? Maybe maybe I should, should just give up. I don't know what to do. And then immediately it came to the his promise came to my mind. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. And this is all the time. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. This is hope in his promises. Mm -hmm. And throughout all the rehabilitation, his presence and his support in his promises is the greatest uh, gift that he gave us. 
just mm. his presence and promises. I don't know how people go through trials without his promises and his support. One of uh, the verse, here is here I'm revealing the yeah. verse. Oh, Romans, here we go. The Romans. Romans 18. So even though we can go through many trials right now, it cannot compare in any way to the glory that awaits for us. Mm -hmm. Because even though now we think, Lord, I can't go, I cannot do it, how can I do it? But we forget that one day it will be over and mm -hmm. there is something waits for us that we can't even imagine, the glory with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And for people who suffer, what I usually do and recommend, um, just turn your eyes upon Jesus, just be very deep in his word every day, all the time, let him surround you with his presence, and then you will see how all the things of earth will grow strangely dim. Mm -hmm. That's how when I go through difficult situations, just I just try to be very deep in his word, uh, fellowship with him. I just surround myself with his presence and I feel so much better because I would say his promises when he comes to you, he's like telling you, Shh, my child, I'm with you, I'll be with you. I'm always here. and memorize his promises because every time you're in a difficult situation or go through trials all the promises can come to your mind and you feel very hopeful you're filled with hope because mm -hmm. his promises is the greatest treasure mm. and now <laughs> i can see why this is a your favorite bible verse romans 8 18 i read it before which is for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So basically that accident um, paralyzed you. You mm -hmm. couldn't walk, you couldn't talk, you had to learn how to talk again. I remember in Sojourner, Sojourners is a fellowship group in Grace Community Church uh, that I've been able to uh, be part of. And I remember when they will be asking to be praying for you because you were dealing with a lot of pain in your body and i think there's some point right the medication wasn't even um helping much with uh, the pain mm -mm, no no mm -hmm. i was uh, when i was in pain i was trying so many new medications but nothing could help me and then at one moment we just had to stop because i was not feeling well because i tried too many medications mm -hmm. and then i just had to stop and i just had to deal with the pain so yeah and how long uh did you go through with this uh, pain in your body mm. for how long? Mm, I think maybe six, seven months. Seven months mm -hmm. of pain. Yeah. And how long did it take you to be able to learn to walk again? I had therapy for six months when they taught me to walk. And slowly, very slowly, I was able to walk more and more and more. So the whole process, I don't know how long it takes took mm. but when there is one moment when I came to the rehabilitation center in April I was hoping to go to learn everything everything again and then to go back to master's university in August mm -hmm. it means in uh, a year four months, in four months. Four months yeah and then but then my therapist told me no Angelina you will not be ready to go back to master's in August your rehabilitation will take you more than a year mm. but her words didn't make me sad because i still had this bright hope that i will go god will provide everything he will give me strength and mm. i will go back in august and then after a month of rehabilitation she told me wow angelina i'm so shocked you will be ready to go back in august mm. And it was very exciting to me to hear it, but it didn't really surprise me because I knew, because I had this right hope, I knew. Yeah. And I think even further on the verse, it just talks about that, right? Um, about this hope. Um, for in this we were saved. For in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. 
Mm-hmm. For who hopes for what he sees? And this is actually from where I um, kind of got the uh, idea from, you know, about this title for this episode, mm-hmm. Unseen Hope, yeah. right? Because we're hoping for, um, for things sometimes that we don't necessarily see. Mm-hmm. It's not like the Lord is showing us, you know, like this yeah. is what's going to happen. But we're hoping that we have a father who loves us and who has promised to be with us no mm-hmm. matter what the circumstances are, no matter the pain that we're facing, um, no matter if we're feeling lonely, no matter what, what is happening at this time, the circumstances that we're facing, we know that he is faithful and we know that his love is forever and yes. he will protect us from everything. From, I mm-hmm. mean, first of all, he, he saved us from mm-hmm. hell, from an eternal uh, eternity in hell through his son, Jesus Christ. And by it har- it's hard, you think oh, it will never be over. It will never be over. It's so hard. But then you remember his promises. No, but my Abba said that what's going to be now, it will, it will pass away. It will, it will end eventually. Mm-hmm. And then wa- what waits us is the eternal glory. Eternal glory that cannot compare with anything. You mentioned before that during that time you wrote a letter, and I believe that you would like to read it for us. Yes, I would love to. Um, and it's just reminding yourself of God's promises through that mm-hmm. time before we even get to it how do you feel that the lord used that trial in your life romans 8 28 also one of my favorite verses mm-hmm. and 29 follows her you that to read it yes mm-hmm. so it says of roman 8 28 to 29 says and we know that for those who love god all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers yes so god works no matter what what's going on in your life eventually god will work it for your good and for his glory Mm -hmm. and with this he will make you more like christ Mm -hmm. and then you will you will be able to serve people who are in need more because God led you through this and he showed you his comfort so you can comfort others with the same comfort. I, I wouldn't be able to comfort people who are going through trials without this trial that I went through. Mm-hmm. And today when I talk to people, I'm very sympathetic to them because I feel a little bit mm-hmm. and I because of this time that I was going through trials, I I know many of God's promises, not of all of them, but many of them I have memorized. So now I can use all the promises that God showed me. Mm-hmm. I can pr- use them to comfort other people mm-hmm. who are going through trials. And yes, so Lord. concerning Romans 8.18, I read a book right now. It's called Hope When It Hurts. And the author says, we can we should excitedly long for the day when we can each look back and informed not by faith but by sight say paul was right nothing no pleasure or pain in the momentary time i had before i arrived here can compare to being at home with my savior nothing can compare to be home with our God. Uh, just two verses that helped me when I got through trials. There are so many of them, but just two. When I go through difficult times and I ask, Lord, I don't know how I can go through this situation. It's too hard. The water is too deep and too dark. I cannot go through it. He reminds me, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you blaze. Here he says that even when you go through deep waters, through fire, he's, he's still there. He will lead you. He will be with you. Mm-hmm. So when you go through trials, dark trials, remember that he is here. He's always here with you. He's mm-hmm. your support. And second verse, in trials we often feel discouraged and hopeless and we don't have strength to continue and we might think maybe I should just just give up I don't know what to do with this life Mm -hmm. but for those who hope in him 
God reminds, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God will give strength. He will be here. He will give strength. And through this trial, he will make you more like his son so that this way you can serve better to people and show them Christ in trials and comfort them with his comfort. Okay. Shortly after the accident, I was feeling very down and in a very dark spot. So I decided to write a letter and included in them some of my favorite Bible verses. I like to share it with people. I would love to share it with you too. Mm -hmm. I hope it encourages you. My dear child, I want to change your life. All the days for you were written in my book even before one of them came to be. I have planned it from the beginning. I know that it may hurt and you will ask me, why Lord, why? But remember that blessed is the one whom God corrects. I wound and I also bind up. I endure, but my hands also heal. My child, during this time you may feel tired and hopeless. Please remember that I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. My child, do not be afraid, but remember that in all things I work for good of those who love me and have been called according to my purpose. Please know that I will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. With love and care, your Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. So with all those promises from my father, Abba, I feel so, so hopeful in those trials. Even though I cannot see and know what's going to happen, and it feels to me that there is no future when I'm in trials, I still have this bright hope because he gave me strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. And during those trials, God grew me so much closer to him. He is so much more personal. And it's because I was, during this trial, I surrounded myself with his presence and his promises. And he showed me that he's enough. Mm -hmm. He's enough. Praise God that you are healthy and now you're able to walk normally and it's just like it was a temporary storm mm -hmm. right it, it yeah. was just for a while but how gracious of our lord to bring heal healing and uh, to restore our health to grow our faith even to give us the opportunity to see the kind of faith that we have right because god doesn't need to know but it's a blessing that he allows us to to see the kind of faith that we have. In trials, it's impossible to go through them without Christ. So if you go through a trial right now, try to get very, very tight to Father mm -hmm. because He will help you. Just just be very, very close to Him. Be in His Word every day, all the time, Good re and read good books with devotionals. And I really love hymns. Hymns. And yes. Which one is your favorite? Yes. Right now, it's turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Yes, and all the things will go strangely dim. Mm. You just focus on Jesus, and it will go strangely dim. What are some of your favorite books? That you right now, usually I read, I like to read, I read really slow, but mm. I love about missionaries. Mm. I'm a missionary kid, and mm -hmm. I have this heart for missionaries. <laughs> yeah. um, but right now, I'm reading when hope, uh, hope when it hurts. Hope when it hurts. Yes, and it teaches you about God's promises and how to give hope to people who go through trials. Mm -hmm. It comforts you and teaches you how to comfort others. Mm. I would say this is my favorite. Can you share with us three things that brings you joy? Yes. <laughs> so, it is worship songs, <laughs> hymns, and because I'm a music major, I mm -hmm. love music, and Bible promises. And I really love my church and family. Thank you so much for just taking the time to share your testimony with us. Thank you for inviting me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like every time that we 
share our testimony is it feels like you share it differently you know and there there are new things that you probably discover or even mm -hmm. and you are reminded of the greatest reminder of all that it's that christ came into our lives sinners uh, and, and loved us and died for us he gave up his life so that we could have ours that we could have an eternity with our father in heaven mm -hmm. it's not because of anything that i that i will do not my good works no matter what i do i will never lose my salvation i cannot lose my salvation mm -hmm. because christ paid the ultimate price um, just want to to remind everyone uh to keep praying for our dear sister isabel that the lord continue to um, uh, strengthen her and comfort her and her family through this uh trials and that she will have a quick recovery and that all the um, next procedures that she will have will be a success but also i would like you to i don't know if, if you guys remember my dear friend rhiannon she shared her testimony live with us if you haven't i will highly suggest that you will go back to our uh, podcast i'll listen to her testimony uh, of how the lord has worked in her life and she's just such a joyful person everyone at church who knows her knows her yes. because of her joy and they love her so we all love her so much and today her grandmother passed away and i know that this is a very difficult time for her and her family and they're not a, they're not believers so if you could be praying for first of all for their salvation for strength and comfort and that rihanna will be encouraged through this time and that she will continue to be an encouragement and the light in the house and that they will come to know christ through her testimony and and that they will refuge in the lord and that they will turn away from their sins and just come to know uh, christ i just hope that you are encouraged through this testimonies this is again ordinary people with extraordinary lives and it's a series dedicated to the testimonies of believers and followers of jesus christ mm -hmm.